Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is RIT 120 Hydraulics. Today we're going to discuss accumulators. Accumulators, basically it's a vessel that stores fluid under pressure for future release of energy. The function of an accumulator, and these are very important, it's basically maintain system pressure, develop fluid flow, compensate for thermal expansion and contraction, control noise, absorb shocks, and the biggest one is emergency usage. Okay, so what is an accumulator? Um, let's start just even just drawing, drawing the schematic. A schematic for an accumulator is basically the soda bottle shaped thing and it's connected to a line. Okay, if it's a spring-loaded accumulator, there's a spring in it. These are mechanical. There's a spring. It's a weight, a great weight. And then there's a hydropneumatic. These are different types. It's basically a bladder. Or a piston. There's only one symbol for those guys. So a spring, a square, a triangle that's not filled in, i.e. air. You can kind of get the picture even from the schematic what this thing does. If this thing is filled with fluid right there and you've got high pressure air on this side of the chamber, what's it doing? Well, it's applying pressure to that fluid. Okay? And this is actually what these things look like. Here's a hydropneumatic bladder accumulator. A bladder, it's basically a rubberized balloon right there. And this has a non, um, basically an inert gas typically nitrogen. You would never put, uh, you would never ever charge an accumulator with uh, air, you know, because there's potential reaction there. Um, basically, nitrogen is a non-explosive inert gas. You always charge an accumulator. You pre-charge it to a certain pressure on that side. And basically, this, as a result, this fluid inside here is under pressure because that nitrogen is wanting to expand this way. And as this accumulator is discharged, you know, it's that bladder is allowing itself to expand and it's pushing, I'll use a different pen color, pushing fluid out of here, a developing flow, again, like one of our one of our critical things we already talked about, pressure. You know, compensating for thermal expansion and contraction. You know, something contracts, fluid can come back into the accumulator. If something expands, fluid can come, come out of it. And it controls noise it'll, and absorbs shocks. It's kind of the same thing there. Basically, it's allowing expansion and contraction. And then when the accumulator is fully discharged, this little poppet valve kind of seats itself so the bladder does not extrude into the system. That would be totally bad. Um, there's another type of uh, accumulator, gas charge accumulator, called a piston accumulator. And if you could think about it, it's a piston face that's charged with nitrogen here. And here's my hydraulic fluid inside here. And that moves up and down, very similar to a bladder. It's just got a hard disk there. And the reason why um, they have those versus the bladder is sometimes your sometimes uh, nitrogen can leak through there. So um, some critical applications. I'll actually give you an article about this one. It's pretty neat about piston accumulators, piston uh, hydropneumatic accumulators. Um, but like I said earlier, this is the biggest one. The reason why uh, accumulators are often put in systems, especially wind turbines, is for emergency operations. Uh, if an actuator needs to move, it requires fluid flow. What if your pump is disabled? 
Um, so let's just draw a simple system. Here's a cylinder. Oops. Here's a directional control valve that operates it. Here's a pump. Obviously our pressure relief valve. What happens when this pump dies? Well, nothing happens. Basically, there is no fluid flow regardless of what happens to those solenoids, whether you shift it to straight through or the cross connect position. Nothing's going to happen there because that fluid's just sitting here. So this is a potentially dangerous application if this fixed position that it's currently at is a wind turbine at full power, okay? And your pump has died, there's no means of slowing this turbine down. It could overspeed. And we all know that overspeed, basically those blades are gonna start bending back and potentially striking that tower. And kind of the, the Coke can with a dent in it, you can stand on a Coke can all day, you put a tiny dent in that empty Coke can and that whole thing comes tumbling down. So you want, and that's you, trying to get away from it. Okay, so obviously you want a means of safely returning those blades to a safe condition in the loss of power. So that's where our accumulator comes in. So let's go ahead and put an accumulator in our system right here. It's a hydropneumatic gas charged accumulator. And what's going to happen is in the event that the pump loses power, the pump is no longer in the system, there's enough stored pressure and a certain volume of fluid in here that when the pump is not producing it, basically, we can shift it to our straight through position, which will allow us to roll that blade to a no power condition. And the wind just cuts through them and your turbine slows down. And you're gonna go ahead and apply the brake at that point. Okay, so does anyone see a problem with this already? So what happens if the pump dies in our accumulator here it is allowing a certain amount of pressure and flow um, in this direction if we need it to. But what happens here? It could also push back through the pump. So that's why you might find yourself with a check valve. Ah, uh, man. right there, okay? So that accumulator cannot discharge through the pump, basically spinning the pump backwards in the event of an emergency power failure. So now let's say the pump is operational, it is operational and you are performing a regular maintenance on this system. You go ahead and shut off the pump and you, sh and you move it to a safe location you know you're removing all sources of stored energy you know so you've locked out and tagged those things out what is another source of locked out of, of uh, stored energy quite obviously the accumulator the accumulator is charged up to an incredible pressure has a certain volume in there that will actually perform work and that work may be crushing you Okay, so you need to go ahead and figure out a way to discharge that accumulator. So typically, hydraulic system, here's our accumulator. There's basically kind of a bleed down circuit for an accumulator. 
off in the form of a directional control valve. Okay, so what is this saying here? And here's to the system. And again, we don't want to bleed through the pump. So what this is saying is in its unenergized state, that's the other thing I need to, you guys need to get through your head right now. Schematics are always, always, always drawn in their de-energized state. So their de-energized state, solenoid A is not energized. Okay. If solenoid A is energized, it is in this closed position and the accumulator can charge up. So you lose power to the pump. Now here's your motor. You've lost power to the pump. The pump is out of the system. Typically you have a battery backup going to the solenoid, keeping solenoid A energized. And this is just an example system. This is this is an example. Don't think it, all wind turbines are like this, or any hydraulic system. This is just an example system. Solenoid A is energized by a battery backup. Okay, so you need to be aware is there are two independent sources of energy. Uh, the pump may die, but there is an electrical battery backup that is supplying energy to solenoid A, keeping it in the closed situation, uh, closed uh, position for that two position directional control valve inform me to drain the accumulator, I need to de-energize solenoid A, moving it to the straight through condition. And I can empty that accumulator of stored hazardous energy. Very important. Accumulators are stored hazardous energy. In addition to all those advantages, you need to be aware that they could, could potentially hurt you. Okay. So proper procedures, if you're working on any system with an accumulator, is to lock out and tag out everything and drain that accumulator and ensure that it is properly safe to work on. The other thing to remember also, this accumulator in this particular example here I showed, it needs to be sized correctly because you need to go ahead and activate that thing to a depower position. But you also can size these things to allow temporary operation of the system. You know, like put a huge accumulator on this thing. You can probably operate that cylinder a couple times. And we're actually going to be doing a lab where we create an accumulator using a loading device and a cylinder. Basically, you compress a spring inside a loading device. And it's very similar to a spring uh, mechanical accumulator. Now, when you reduce power, uh, remove power, you basically you're storing energy in here storing pressurized fluid right here. When you remove uh, the pump to the system, well, the spring is forcing back on this thing and it's pressurizing the fluid right here. And that volume is critical to determine how many times and wh at what pressure you can operate that system. Okay, so we'll actually be doing that in lab. So one of the last things about um, accumulators, especially your hydropneumatic gas accumulators, gas charge accumulators, um, this thing called pre-charge. Pre-charge, pressure. That's what you've got to put into that system to uh, before you fill it up with hydraulic fluid. So if you have to replace an accumulator, you have to pre-charge it to a certain PSI of an inert gas like nitrogen before you would install it into the system. The other thing too to remember, charging something quickly versus charging something slowly. The There is a non-linearity uh, because this is a gaseous system. And additionally, there's some non-linearity for, um, for springs. Um, weight, it's always, it's always the same weight forcing down on it. Whereas a spring and a gas charge, there is some nonlinearity. So it's not like you're going to get constant pressure 
to a certain point and slowly decreasing, um, you're going to get this nonlinear curve. Um, the other thing that's weird about these things, especially these gaseous ones, you charge it up super fast uh, versus charging it up slow. Um, that is, uh, I believe it's called adiabatic charging uh, versus isothermal charging. There is a certain energy that is going into that gas. Um, so you want to charge it up slowly, basically, um, that it will store more pressure over, store more energy over a longer period. Okay, so not only is there a pre-charge pressure, there's a rate at which you charge these. Okay, that's it for uh, accumulators. Again, remember these guys right here, maintain system pressure, develop fluid flow, compensate for thermal expansion and contraction, they control noise, absorb shocks, and most importantly, can be used for emergencies. Um, these are one of my favorite devices out there uh, because you're going to be using them a lot too. You're going to see them everywhere inside a wind turbine. And when an instructor says, this is my favorite device, this is me stomping my foot in a classroom saying, I will probably have this on the test. All right, that's about it for accumulators.